it is a truth universally acknowledged that when I see something that looks complex, I will do it. Just for the aesthetic. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. About a week and a half ago, I was in an antique store with my father. While I was there, I saw this chair. It was this unremarkable chair, about 120. It had a string across it saying don't sit down on it. It was wood with a black lacquer on top that was frankly disgusting and the worst choice in fabric I have ever seen. It's not as old as these two items because they're from the Victorian era but this is definitely probably the late Edwardian period so the chances were that the wood underneath is probably quite nice. Luckily I had some green velvet in the same shade as these two items and I knew that given my skills I could probably reupholster this chair and create a matching set so I'm gonna try and upholster this and we shall find out if I can do it. Okay, I'm done. Okay, that was just stop. Now that I've got the base off, I've started to realise the fact that the lower band of the wood is very damaged. It has basically fallen away from the amount of reupholstery it's had done. As you can see, these are the tack marks that the fabric would have originally been tacked into. If you look at my 1850s armchair, the beam across is a lot more sculptured and this is where the fabric is tacked into and then the trim covers the tacks. I'm thinking that I can stabilize a lot of this wood with some wood filler and it won't match perfectly to the grain but I also think it's gonna be a lot more stable because I'm pretty sure that this wood is rubbing against the bottom of the frame. And considering that it is a spinning chair, I need it to not do that, thank you very much. I needed to strip this chair and the first thing I did was to take lots of reference photos for putting the chair back together. Then it was a case of removing the fabric, the trim, and wow, these staples did not want to come out at all. My fingers, mate, my fingers, they hurt me. Hello, good morning. It's another sunny day in lovely England. Right, yesterday I basically stripped the chair and my hand hurts so much you don't even understand. It feels like it's being burnt. So today we've got two things to do. The first being that I've stripped the fashion fabric from the chair. With that fabric, I can then create a template, cut out the new fabric, and start to piece it together. I also have to sew the piping. The other thing is, is that I really hate the dark wood. All of my furniture has a lovely sort of walnut brightness to it and that is just so dark and so drab. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a small section from where you can't see it and I'm gonna sand it back to the original wood. I'm then going to experiment with some stains, some finishes, some beeswax, stuff like that and see what the actual wood colour looks like because if I can if I can introduce the grain back into this chair it will look amazing. Today's gonna be fun. I will keep you guys updated and bring you along for the ride and we shall see how I do. I don't know what I'm doing. Let's just figure it out. What can go wrong? Oh coffee. Coffee's important. Sitting on my headphones, not a good idea. So now that I've sanded down through the veneer, not the veneer, the lacquer, the surface, the stain, the wood is still incredibly dark, but I like the look of the wood more than the lacquer or the varnish that's on top of it. So what I have to do now is gonna suck because it means that I have to, because I do like it, sand the entire thing down, which is going to take a while, and I'm going to save you that footage, because that's going to be the most boring thing in the world to watch. Or maybe a little bit of footage, just so you can get some ASMR. 
After covering the chair with some plastic just so the sanding dust doesn't get into the stuffing, it was time to finally cut out my passion. My passion? My pattern pieces. Oh wow, English is not my photo. I have finally finished cutting out all the pieces. Now, I've got my piping here. The only piping cord I had was a little bit thick, but I think it will still work pretty well. And God damn it, I love making piping. It's just such a satisfying activity to do. Unfortunately, that means that I now have nothing left to do apart from sand the chair. <laughs> and I just, oh God, I could have left it black. I could have left it black, but no. If I'm gonna have this chair, it's gonna look aesthetic as all heck, because what's the point otherwise? Well, that was awful, but I have finished sanding, and I put a little bit of wood filler onto some of the gaps where there's a bit of damage, and then I'll bring it upstairs, and tomorrow we can start work on refabricating. That's not a word. The chair. Fun times. It's not a few days later. It's several days later, for many reasons. First, realised I didn't have the wood dye that I needed. Second, realised that my furniture polish was a bit dry and crackly. So the sanding's done, and I've got the lovely wood grain coming out on it. Unfortunately, the next thing to do is to do the upholstery. Let's strip the plastic off the chair, and then I can start trying to piece together the upholstery, because that's something I've never done before, but I suppose now's the time to learn. Let's do it. I started with laying the fabric onto the chair itself and using some strong pins to pin it into the stuffing. When I had the pin placement correct, I could start putting in either staples or traditional furniture tacks. To be honest, I prefer traditional furniture tacks, but they're a little bit more destructive to the wood, so I went 50-50 with them really. Good morning. I'm completely incapable of keeping my room clean as I work. I am a chaotic mess. Look at this shit. Everything's everywhere. There are staples, there are tacks on the floor. <sighs> Chaos. Words can't tell you how much my hands hurt. The staple gun is a push one, and as a result, you have to really whack it real good whack it real good to get the staple into the wood why am i doing this oh yeah the matching aesthetic oh god okay right today i have to put the end on the top half of the upper bit don't know what's called the back the back the back of the chair wow english and then the next thing will be to put the padding and the upholstery on the bottom and please for love of christ let me finish today i want to sit in this chair
finally finished the back of the chair. I don't know if you can see here, the padding has suffered some damage. It's like falling off. So what I have, and I am so proud of myself, this really rather nasty the batting. It's got a lovely bit of spray paint on the back, but no one will see it, so it's fine. I'm kind of happy with myself because I've been keeping this in my stash in the basement for about nine years. And it just proves that hoarding materials unnecessarily actually works. So I'm real proud of myself. So I'm gonna lay this on top of here and give it a new structure. And I'm gonna just rip off the corners and make it nice and diffused. And then we're gonna start putting on the green velvet. <sighs> this probably is one hell of a long video. Oh dear me. All right, let's go, let's get going. Good morning guys, it's the next day again. So I think today we're gonna finally finish the chair and wow, God, this has been a labor of love. My hands hurt. It's been a lot of sanding, a lot of prep, a lot of just all these new techniques which I've been so excited to try. The last thing to do is, as you can see now, I've put the stuffing around the edge of the chair. The last thing to do is to put the upholstery band around the chair, tack it down, and then we're gonna start on the trim and that should be really fun. So let's just speed through this eat through the footage because I'm sure this is already way too long. I had such a weird dream last night. I dreamt that I'd been given like a bag of rats and of course me being me was like I can't keep rats in a plastic bag. They'll suffocate. They're not happy. Rats need a lot of space. So I went up into my attic to get like because I was like I know the previous people they had a hamster cage and their hamster cage will do until I can buy a really big one because apparently I now have rats. So I went upstairs and apparently in my dream in the attic, the previous tenants had left a terrarium the size of me. Like I could climb into the hole and get inside it. It was ginormous and there was like moss inside and plants and I was like, they've left this up in the attic. It's mine now. I'm living my full plant dream. No one else has a terrarium this size. Did I find the cage? No, I didn't. Did I ever see the rats again? No, I didn't. I hope they're okay somewhere in this noggin. <sighs> what? What? What's wrong with me? Now finally done with the chair, I'm so happy that I did this despite the fact that I give myself extra work. But it looks beautiful and it looks beautiful in this room with the amount of green I've got going on. You know, it was a lot of manual labour but it wasn't too expensive to do it apart from the initial purchase of the chair. I'm very happy with the, the green of the velvet. The only thing I had slight trouble with was at the back, the lining up of the where the opening was and the closing was and sewing that together. It's a bit frumpy and I don't particularly like it, but you know what? That'll do, donkey. That'll do. So now I just have to enjoy my nice new chair. I hope you guys are doing great and I shall see you next time. I think we're done here, don't you? <laughs> Almighty. Take two, electric boogaloo, because I hated the first one. The reality of actually filming is that you're constantly crouched like a gremlin on the floor. <sighs> it's a look. Doing that in a corset was <laughs> not what I thought would happen. <laughs> oh. oh, my knees, I am too old for this.